to our service this morning and if you're comfortable and able to do so please stand as we sing our first hymn Guide Me O Thou Great Jehovah mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Would you like to be seated please? Well, welcome to our service this morning and welcome to those that are joining us online. Psalm 30 tells us, sing to the Lord you saints of his, praise his holy name for his anger lasts only a moment but his favour lasts a lifetime. Weeping may remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. So let us rejoice together. And as we start our service by saying together our prayer of unity. Almighty and everlasting God, 
as we come together as your church, the body of Christ. We thank you that we can worship you together, even if we are not in the same place. We thank you for this opportunity to pray together and remember each other at this time. Thank you that you have brought us safely to this day, and we ask that you keep us from danger, guide us in all that we do, and for what we do, be righteous in your sight. Bless us now, we pray, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue with our prayer of preparation. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's just have a time of quiet as we think over the past week and to give those things to the Lord as we come to confession. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolving to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We say together, God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done and are mindful of that we fail to do. For the sake of Jesus, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, if you're able and comfortable with it, would you all stand for the Gloria? Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We remain standing for our next song, which is The Lord's My Shepherd. Oh! 
restores my soul and I will trust in you alone and I will trust in you say the collect together. Gracious Father, revive your church in our day and make her holy, strong and faithful for your glory's sake. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. Uh, today's Old Testament reading comes from the second book of Samuel, uh, chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. It happened in the spring of the year, at the time when kings go out to battle, that David sent Job and his servants with him, and all Israel. And they destroyed the people of Ammon and besieged Rabbah, but David remained at Jerusalem. Then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman bathing and the woman was very beautiful to behold. So David sent and inquired about the woman, and someone said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her, and she came to him, and he lay with her, for she was cleansed from impurity, and she returned to her house. And the woman conceived, so she sent and told David and said, I am with child. Then David sent to Job, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Job sent Uriah to David. When Uriah had come to him, David asked how Job was doing, and how the people were doing, and how the war prospered. And David said to Uriah, Go down to your house and wash your feet. So Uriah departed from the king's house, and a gift of food from the king followed him. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord, and did not go down to his house. So when they told David, saying, Uriah did not go to, down to his house, David said to Uriah, Did you not come from a journey? Why did you not go down to your house? And Uriah said to David, The ark and Israel and Judah are dwelling in tents, and my lord Job and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go to my house to eat and drink and to lie with my wife? As you live and as your soul lives, I will not do this thing. Then David said to Uriah, Wait here today also, and tomorrow I will let you depart. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day and the next. Now when David called him, 
he ate and drank before him, and he made him drunk. And at evening he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his Lord, but he did not go down to his house. In the morning it happened that David wrote a letter of Job and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in a letter saying, Set Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and retreat from him that he may be struck down and die. This is the word of the Lord. This reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 3. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power, through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. And now, if you're comfortable doing so, would you please stand for the gospel? Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Some time after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is, the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw this sign Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. By now it was dark and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing, and the waters grew rough. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were frightened. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. 
This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do have a seat. Today's Gospel reading contains two major events, two major miracles. The first, the feeding of the 5,000, and the miracle of just a few loaves and a couple of fish that fed thousands of people with more left over than was even started with. And the second was Jesus walking on the water. It's the latter that I'm focusing on today. Now you may remember I have spoken in the past of some fears and phobias that I have. One is feet. Can't even look at my own, let alone anybody else's. One of God's little jokes there when he called me to be ordained. Think of Maundy Thursday and the worship and the washing of feet on that day. Another great fear of mine is heights. I become a screaming, quivering wreck, even going over the Dartford Bridge. And on several trips to the Holy Land, some people experienced this fear. On a second trip, some people then avoided me. Others took great delight on being in the same minibus as we climbed the steep winding roads to Mount Tabor to the site of the transfiguration of Jesus. On the third time, some people even took photos and videos of me quaking and screaming and videoing. However, most people were very kind and even prayed for me. They even tried singing what we just sang, and I will trust in you alone. And I did try joining in, honest I did, most unsuccessfully between the screams. Well, I also have a great fear of water. I almost drowned when I was just six years old in the swimming pool of my primary school. It was only because of a, my very tall teacher who plucked me from the water where I was doing an impression of an upturned duck, head under water and feet flapping above. Well, I also suffer badly from seasickness. I can't even watch the waves lapping. All this very strange as I actually was born and bred on Canvey. Lots of water, lots of lapping of waves. So I can totally sympathise with the disciples who were on that boat in the middle of Lake Galilee, especially as it was night and then a storm blew up. Well, Jesus has just fed the 5,000 with just five loaves and two fish, as we heard at the beginning of today's Gospel reading. Just a little aside on that, from the, my main topic, I'd just like to say something about the 5,000. It actually read 5,000 men. Well, I think it was far more than 5,000, therefore, at the time, because only the men were counted. We know from Matthew and Mark's Gospel that there were women, and we know that there were definitely children there too. So way more than 5,000. Sorry, back on subject. After this miraculous event, which was a great success, and the crowds adored Jesus, he took himself off to pray alone. He sent the disciples back to Capernaum ahead of him. And during his ministry, Jesus often took himself off alone to pray. He did this after times of success, such as on this day, at times of testing, such as in the Garden of Gethsemane, on the night that he was betrayed and arrested. We can only guess at what went on during these times of private prayer. We might speculate a couple of things. He focuses on God's kingdom rather than on himself. He doesn't focus on his own triumphs and successes because they are down to God's power and God's plan alone. He is humble before God. He doesn't triumph in his own success. Secondly, he listens afresh to the Father. What the Father would have him do next? Well, having spent time in prayer with God the Father, Jesus sets off to rejoin his disciples. But this is Jesus. So he doesn't set off on the long walk around Lake Galilee to reach Capernaum on the other side. Oh, no. He simply walks across Lake Galilee on the water. Now, to paint you a picture, Lake Galilee is enormous. It's not how we might picture a small British lake. It's also incredibly deep. By the time Jesus sets off to walk across it to meet up with his disciples, it was dark and the sea had become rough and a storm had brewed. The disciples were rowing their boat as best they could. They couldn't use the sails, it was far too stormy for that. 
so they were already scared because of the storm. And then, out of the pitch darkness, walking on the water, comes Jesus. Now, the disciples were terrified. I would have been a complete and utter bubbling wreck. Jesus knows they're afraid, and so he calls out to them. It is I. Do not be afraid. Only then did their fear subside and they were willing to take Jesus into the boat. Only when they heard his voice and recognised him did their fears subside. Only when they heard him speak did they trust and believe what was actually happening. In Matthew and Mark's gospel, we hear that Jesus also calmed the raging water. And as soon as Jesus gets into the boat, they arrive safely to land. This episode is one of the signs that Jesus performs that John talks about in his gospel. The fifth sign, the fifth miracle, the fifth sign that Jesus gives that he is no simple human, that he is the Son of God. Because only God can walk on water, only God can calm the sea, control the winds, control the waves. It's a sign to remind us that with God, all things are possible. It's a sign that if we put all our trust in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, he will see us safely through troubled waters. He will see us through testing times. Times when we are terrified, when we're hurt, when we grieve, when we feel helpless and alone. He will see us through times when we feel abandoned and unloved. And he walks beside us always, even when we don't recognise that it is him. It's a sign that we should not rely on ourselves or even on others, but rely on him. If we profess to have faith, but then rely on ourselves, think ourselves great and clever and wonderful, well then we're kind of telling God that we don't need him. Now maybe there are times when we can all do that in our lives, but then God reminds us that actually we do still need him, and he is still there. We do still need to call on him through Jesus the Son. And sometimes when our fear, our worry, our anger, our grief makes us deaf and blind to God's presence, well then we need to remind ourselves to stop and listen. Listen for the Lord's voice. That still, small voice of calm amidst the raging waters of our lives. So let's try to remember to trust the Lord in all things. Even to trust him when our faith is lacking or being challenged by events or other people. So friends and fellow pilgrims in the Holy Land were right to sing and I will trust in you alone when that minibus. Now I do trust God. I did trust God then. But I do have trouble trusting people. Especially if they're driving a minibus up Mount Tabor with only one arm and looking behind them having a conversation. So when everything is wonderful and we forget our need of Jesus when we make some great achievement and attempted to take all the credit, when something goes wrong in our lives or we experience sadness, grief, fear, loneliness, well, there's no better response than to follow Jesus to a quiet place on our own where we can give thanks and be reminded that our past, our present and our future in this earthly life and in eternal life in heaven, well, then we are all safe in God's hands. To put our trust in him who will provide and who will save. Now, every now and again, when I research and the Holy Spirit fills me to write the sermons, sometimes a song comes into my head. And this is the one that came into my head with this. You might know it. You might even want to join in. Put your hand in the hand of the man who stilled the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calmed the sea. 
Take a look at yourself and you can look at others differently. Put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Should we sing that one more time? Are the words up there? Marvellous. Put your hand in the hand of the man who stilled the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calmed the sea. Take a look at yourself and you can look at others differently. Put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Amen. Thank you, Trudy. And now let's stand as we say our creed together. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, would you like to be seated as we come to our time of intercession? Holy God, make us receptive and open as we, we lay our intercessions before you. May we accept your kingdom like children taking bread from the hands of their parents as those Jesus fed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you that our ministry team are working faithfully to lead your church here in Basildon, and that you work through them. May they always be aware of the blessings you bestow on them. Strengthen and uphold them when they grow weary in their ministries. Constantly remind us all that you who began all good work in us will ultimately perfect it through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for your whole creation, for our brothers and sisters throughout the world, for their lives to be respected and revered, regardless of creed or colour, gender or sexuality, wealth or status, and for a responsible sharing of precious resources and the conservation of our fragile and beautiful world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we raise before you those around the world trying to grow or produce our food under difficult circumstances as climate change continues to affect farmers and producers. We also pray for people throughout the world who are struggling to cope with the effects of climate change, flooding, excessive heat, especially the frail and elderly and any others at risk. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, bring healing to all who are sick in mind, body, and spirit. Make whole those who are broken and shed light wherever there is darkness. Hear now, aloud or in our hearts, 
those we name before you who have asked for or are in need of our healing prayer, especially today for Barbara Want undergoing surgery following a fall. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we thank you for those who have traveled before us on the way of the cross and are now at peace in your eternal presence. Help us to live always mindful of your promise to us that the road of faith will lead into your heavenly kingdom. In a moment of silence, we bring before you those on our hearts who have died recently or whose anniversary occurs at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, Fill our hunger with the food that lasts, the bread of God, which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> Once again, if you're able, would you stand for the peace, please? God will speak peace to his people, to those who turn to him in their hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So let us share the sign of peace with one another. Peace. Remain standing for our offertory song, which is Cornerstone.
The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give, give thanks and praise. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image, and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law, and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please do be seated as we continue in prayer. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendour and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Amen. Amen. Lord, we believe. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us, dying for his own. He set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, we believe. believe. On the night he gave up himself for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, we believe. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Lord, we believe. Therefore, we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high and we long for his coming in glory. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ, and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Look with favour on your people, and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free, and fill your church with power from on high. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with Saint Andrew and all your saints at the table in your kingdom, where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom 
and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one God. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. The body of Christ, broken for us all. Amen. blood of Christ shed for us all. Amen.
I can lie down, go off to sleep, knowing you're watching over me. Wonderful Lord, wonderful God, help me to trust you forever. I need not fear, cause you are near. I can lie down and sleep.
Holy Father, who gathered us here around the table of your Son to share this meal with the whole household of God. In that new world where you reveal the fullness of your peace, gather people of every race and language to share in the eternal banquet of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we say together, Lord, we have broken your bread and received your life. By the power of your Spirit, keep us always in your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A few notices. During the summer school holidays, Holy Cross will be open on a Wednesday morning from 10.30 until around 12.30. Um, everyone is welcome. There will be tea, coffee, squash, cake, biscuits. Um, there are uh, small games for young children and some colouring. But it is not just for children, it is for everybody. So do please come along, have some fellowship and a chat at Holy Cross on a Wednesday morning. If you haven't already picked up the new sheet, please do. There's lots in there. There's some interesting reading material. One is about the CAP, the Christians Against Poverty, the Debt Centre. Please do have a read of that. Some more background on the living in love and faith. And a summary of the Church Council, the Parochial Church Council, PCC, that was held on the 15th of this month. Um, all interesting reading is so you know what's going on in the wider world outside of these four walls please do have a read through that and everything else that is contained within the new sheet um, there's a few not happenings this week there is no home group on Monday nor is there cake and fellowship at St Andrews on Tuesday uh, no cafe community lunch on Thursday and no joyful noise at St Andrews on Friday. It sounds like we're not doing anything. I think we're just having a summer break because everyone deserves a break and numbers are generally down at these times. Um, so please do make sure if you attend any of these things usually that you note um, where and when and if they are happening. Anything I've forgotten Mr Walden? Lovely. Any birthdays? No, no one's going to own up to anybody? Okay, in that case, shall we stand if we're able for our final song today? No, I has seen. Oh, Layla's coming around with, um, with musical instruments.
the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, those you love, those you pray for, and those you miss, today and always. Amen. Amen. I'll go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.